with the defense, you only gave up. The good news, the silver lining is you only gave up 14 points. Uh, it looked worse than it didn't score. But I'm just wondering with the linebacker situation, Matt Milano, man, I really was impressed with his ability at the line of scrimmage to make contact. And I'm wondering, is this possibility down the road that he could be a middle linebacker and flipping uh, Tremaine Edmonds to the outside position? Because, boy, he really, man, he really was hitting some guys. And also uh, your take on Harrison uh, Phillips as well. His yeah. play last night. Yes. Um, Matt, you're right. I agree with you. Matt had a terrific game last night. Uh, was played with really good violence, uh, making tackles all over the place. Uh, really gave us a boost especially in that fourth quarter when we needed to get a stop in the red zone and keep them out of the end zone. And he came up with some big uh, tackle for losses that made a difference. As far as moving him to middle linebacker, we really feel like we have him in the right spot, George, and he's doing a great job for us as an outside backer. And we really like what Tremaine gives us inside. So uh, right now, Matt will probably remain where he is and Tremaine will remain you know, where he is as our middle linebacker. And then Harrison, he had a heck of a game as well. Uh, you know, you're right. Sometimes you look at the, the Russian numbers and you forget that there were some things that were good about that game. And Harrison was definitely a bright spot. Uh, he played extremely well, uh, did a good job of getting off of blocks and making tackles for us. And uh, we're really, really proud of the way uh, that he played last night. Yeah, and, and it seemed like he, he's really getting comfortable with it because he was beating his man a lot. It just seems like as a nose guard, when they were with a sweep, he just wasn't, he was not able to get over for the sweep, but anything straight ahead or, or near him in his zone area, boy, he seemed to, to really be able to make a play, make first contact and, uh, and hold him up and help the, uh, the rest of the guys that help out uh, with, with making a play. Is that, do you see that as being with the defensive front, being more aggressive like that, like you were last night, shooting gaps and, and things like that down the road against running teams like Tampa Bay with Leonard Fortinet coming up? Yeah, I mean, what Harrison did and some other guys, you know, when we did create some negative plays, but they were run through their gaps and, and making those tackles uh, made a difference. Uh, Harrison for sure stood out uh, with his ability to be able to shed blocks and make tackles. But, yeah, I mean, that's what you want to do when in a, in a perfect world. You want to do that all the time and not allow uh, a long run like we allowed on that, that one toss play. All right, Coach. Thanks a lot. And the other silver lining to last night's defense, yeah, you you gave up. They threw the ball only three times, but the record was two times, and that was by Buffalo. I saw that game. That was the great O.J. Simpson ran all over the Jets, and we only threw the ball two times and won that game. So the silver lining is you kept that record alive for the Bills, and good luck this coming Sunday. Thank you, George. Coach Frazier, Mookie Arkins, Buffalo Sports Eighty. How you doing today, sir? Doing good. How are you, Mook? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm, uh, you know, just uh, soaking up a little bit of sun for y'all to y'all come down here, you know, this weekend. But um, <laughs> gap integrity. Now, I think you did a good job. I, I, I can care less about the 45 times everybody make want to make a big deal about that. It's football. They're going to run the ball. That's what they do. Um, but gap integrity, Coach B, you always talk about that. And one time, the only time I can see yeah. that it was a blown assignment was the 63 yarder when. You know, we got that overflow. They overran that cutback wing, and then, you know, he was able to make a play. So, once again, Coach, I, I, I ask you, you know, how important is that gap for integrity? And obviously, we know how it can hurt you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that 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 play for sure stands out. Uh, and we, you and I have talked about this before. You're right. Gap integrity is everything, and we just – we got out of our gap. You know, we got some guys that got cut out of their gaps, and we had some guys that overran the ball. And, you know, we got to take good angles to the football – and that explosive just really leaves a bad taste in your mouth because, I mean, that's the one touchdown they got in the whole game. And uh, it just, you, you don't want that to happen. It shouldn't happen. And uh, we got to do better. Absolutely. And, you know, on the flip side of that plan, Tampa Bay, uh, they're a team that's, you know, they're going to mix it up. They're, they're not going to pass just three times, obviously, with Tom Brady being back there coaching. One thing that I can say that's an eye score when the defense is something that, Y'all trying to be some of the emphasis coming into the season was getting to the quarterback, rushing the passer. Right now, Coach, you have 21 sacks. That's like 25th in the league. Um, how do you plan to get after a quarterback such as Tom Brady, who's not as mobile, who's going to stand there in the pocket with you, and he's going to basically touch your DBs and Dane Jackson and, 
Levi Wallace. So how do you plan to get after the quarterback? Yeah, you know, he's getting the ball out really fast. Mookie probably as quickly as anybody in the league right now. He's not taking any hits. I, I think their offensive line is one of those teams that have given up the least sacks in the league. So they're doing a good job of getting out. So we'll be challenged to be able to get get him on the ground. So we'll have to get our hands up and try to get some batted balls and, and just try to get around him as much as we can. But he's doing a great job of getting it out. And your offensive line is doing a great job of blocking. Absolutely, Coach. Hey, have a great week of practice, and uh, good luck Sunday. Thank you. Hey, Leslie, John Morrill. Hey, John. And here you thought you were done with Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, man. He's giving us some, giving us the blues on occasion. So uh, uh, he definitely presents challenges. Uh, got him another ring, and uh, he just continues to get better and better, it seems. It's just amazing. Uh, he's done a great job down there. I mean, obviously, I mean, the loss of Tredavious White, we didn't really see, see that impact against the, uh, what, what the Patriots did last night. But um, just how do you now go about, you know, preparing your defensive secondary against Tom Brady and the weapons he has, even though it doesn't look like it? Well, Antonio Brown's not going to be part of it. Well, he still has a, a <laughs> really good arsenal of receivers and one of the best tight ends in pro football. And, and, and Gronikowski. So uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a challenge for sure, uh, but we got to find a way. Uh, we got to find a way to be able to put ourselves in a position uh, to make some plays on the back end. And uh, we look forward to the challenge. Uh, you know, it's, it's a game that we need for a lot of reasons. And we got to find a way to uh, slow that pass and attack down and give us a chance to you know, get a W. In your experience, all your lengthy years of experience, when you in the midst of a, a one win, one loss, one win kind of like stretch like this. And, and, and the team seems to be searching for something. Um, I mean, how, how, how do you keep things upbeat um, given that you've been riding this? What you didn't want is this roller coaster run of win one, lose one. Yeah, you know, John. Every season is different, as you know. You've been around a long time, and you go through some different things as you're trying to find your identity. And sometimes it takes December to really find out who you are as a team. And uh, I think we we're we're just about there. Uh, I think there are some things that were revealed over the last couple of weeks that will help us in the long run. And you know, you don't want to be win one, lose one. You don't want to be that. Uh, you really got to focus on that one game. And for us this week is Tampa Bay. And that's where our, our focus will be. And that's how you approach it. You just can't, it really, you don't want to look back now. You really don't want to look ahead past Tampa. Uh, it's really about this one game. And if you can do that, just take them one at a time, then you have a chance to maybe put some things together. But it's all about this one game right now. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Sorry Josh, about that, Les. My bad. Hearing. Sorry about that. The uh, thanks for taking a Josh Reed here. Thanks for taking a couple yeah. of minutes um, this afternoon. Um, you know the, the teams are struggling right now. A lot of you know negativity kind of swirling around, at least outside the building. Um, you know, kind of building off what John was asking. How how confident are you that you guys have the pieces inside that locker room to make sure that everything stays together, pushes forward, and fights through this this slump right now? Yeah, you know, they're, Josh, this is not the first time we've experienced some adversity. You know, it's with this team, uh, it's a different team than some of the teams we've had in years past, but we've been able to find our way through adversity in the past. And for that reason, you know, you hold on and believe that we'll find our way in this situation as well. I mean, it's so much more football to be played. And I know there's some doom and gloom out there, but there's a lot of ball to be played. Uh, we still, in a lot of ways, control our own destiny. Uh, we need to get it going for sure. And we're looking forward to the opportunity that we have coming up uh, this coming Sunday. But uh, all is not lost. Uh, there's a lot more ball to be played. Is this where, is this the time of the season where you find out exactly who the leaders are inside that locker room, you know, amongst the players? You know, we've got some guys that are that have really been standing up for us uh, and really leading uh, during these challenging times. And they'll continue to stand up. They'll continue to lead. 
Uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll get it right. Uh, we just got to keep pushing forward and, and keep learning from some of these experiences that hopefully as we continue through the month of December, we'll just get better and better through some of these experiences.